In this video I'm going to compare a couple trips that I've done red clawing at Somerset Dam and also Wyvernhoe. Going to show the type of areas that seem to work for myself, including screenshots from the sounder, the types of bait that I use, and also the size comparison of red claw from Somerset compared to Wyvernhoe. Hope you enjoy. Red claw are native in the Cape York region across to the Northern Territory. They live in freshwater rivers and billabongs just like this one. Wherever red claw are found there will often also be cherubim, a freshwater prawn. I've personally caught many on my travels around these areas and at night time with the spotlight you can see the red eyes walking around everywhere. This type of habitat is much different to the typical impoundment areas that they live in around South East Queensland and Southern Queensland. This shows that they're able to live just about anywhere as I've also got them in dirty water holes out around the Birdsville area with water that wasn't even running. The baits I like to use are cheese and rock melon, however they eat just about anything. They are vegetarians, however they'll eat dog food, cat food, loosened hay and even meat. Sunlight soap is popular, however I don't like it when in a boat because as soon as you pull the pots up everything becomes very slippery and is quite dangerous. Just something like that. Looks pretty tasty. No right or wrong way to do it. That I know of. I'm starting, it's just like that. Clip her over. Throw a cable tie over any spots where it could get opened or crawl out. Okay, hopefully get some red claw. This is the type of area I was just putting those pots in. That's all weed. I was putting it either in that or trying to hit the edge of it. Pots were going in at about 15 foot, about the deepest, and I had some in about six foot right in the weed. Oh, we'll just leave these overnight and see how we go. Another nice little sort of group. Not massive. Not massive red claw, but um, oop, they're edible. I'm just using um, some cheese, which they're definitely enjoying. That seems to be the only thing that's really touched. This varies though. Um, some rock melon, and also some red pawpaw. These are just on special at the supermarket. They're a little bit bigger. A lot of shrimp in this one. Oh, well, that's a nice little hole. Looks like it's uh, garlic red claw and leftover prawns from the other day for brekkie. 
Yeah, man. So I've put pots here and before and got some really good size ones. So we'll see if there's any here still. But the main reason I chose this area is you got a point, but the, you can see grass out of there because the water level has come up. They're in about 12 foot, all of those pots. But it's a bit of a cove. When it was raining, there would have been water running straight down off that little gully, bit of a catchment area. But the main reason I'm up in here is still because there's a bit of a gully that would have been had some runoff come in through a few weeks ago up the back here. So hopefully they've all congregated up around this way. There's plenty of tree stumps around, so there's probably some reasonable structure underneath the water as well, one would assume. Oh, we'll just leave these overnight and see how we go. Well, this is where I had some a couple of weeks ago. So we'll see. Got some big ones. We'll see if uh, there's still some more here. Um, one. Just the one. Good one, bump. Good, nice size. Oh, it's Which is what we want to see. Touching the cheese. Come on, mate. Wait. I need to run off too much. Uh, nice size one. They get a lot bigger than that, but I found that's probably about the average for Wyvernhoe. So last week got a nice haul here, so... I can see one. Oh, there we go. There's a few. So... They would have been in about 8 foot of water, compared to the other one was 12-ish. So there we go. Get them before they run off. This is more your Somerset average size I've found. You do get very big ones as well, but... Little catfish back. You're not hurting anyone. Where well, these are more your average Wyvernay type size, I've found. Again, it changes quite often, but that hasn't touched the red core. 
they're enjoying the cheese though but it can go other ways I've had the cheese never touched before as well so just depends what mood they're in I think feels heavy. Oh, there we go. That's the guy. To aggressive, aggressive things. That's some some nice red core. Those ones. Good nippers on him. You definitely, you do get bigger numbers of red core at Somerset. It's not uncommon for people to get well over 50. But from my experience, you get much more quality at wide than hay. They are quite hard to find at times, as it's such a big body of water. But when you do find them, definitely quality over quantity. It's a different type of structure you got to look for. Somerset, you're more probably tree orient orientated, steeper banks, rocky banks, where here at Wyvernhoe, it's much more subtle. You're looking for your creeks, the edge of your creeks, there's definitely your steep drop offs for the cliffs. But I tend to go up more in the coves. Probably the biggest thing with Wyvern Hay is you don't get the, the angling pressure. Somerset in a good weekend, not uncommon. There's probably a hundred people out there with red claw pots set. Come out to Wyvern Hay, you may get a dozen. It's easier to get a feed at Somerset, I feel. But if you can put in the time and try to locate some of Wyvern hay, you yeah, definitely be better off. As one, as your average red claw here would be easily twice the size of your average at Somerset. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea compared between the two. It's definitely good fun. Go out, go out camping for the night and let the pots do the work. Wake up in the morning. Have a bit of garlic red claw for brekkie. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> 